So just recently, I was actually working on a different video about Screamo songs, and I was trying to keep all of my terminology correct. So in my research, I actually found a lot of really confusing and contradictory information. And so I kept trying to find more, and I found that it's actually really common for people to misunderstand and wonder what the difference between Screamo and post-hardcore is, um, and where the line is drawn. And so I wanted to find more about that and actually give people an answer. Now, if you weren't into punk in the early 90s, let alone alive, then you might not know that Screamo is more than just music with screamed vocals in it. Um, and I'm going to tell you what you won't hear from enough people in the scene. That's totally understandable. See, in the early 2000s, mainstream culture labeled basically any band with harsh tones or a punk or metal sound that had screamed vocals in it, either screamo or post-hardcore, which are supposedly two different things with different histories. And that just continued up through the 2010s to now, when it's basically impossible to find anyone who agrees on what the difference is between screamo and post-hardcore and what defines those two genres. So in this video, we are going to go through the history of the two and analyze a few of the sounds that comprise them and see if we can't find an answer to the questions, what is screamo, what is post-hardcore, and what is the difference between the two? I grew up in the early 2000s and I listened to bands like Under Oath and Norma Jean and all of the big screamo bands that were in Hot Topic at that time. And even though my friends and I listened to this stuff, we didn't know the history of punk. We just called it all screamo or hardcore or HXC because that's what we heard it referred to as. I didn't know until my later high school years what hardcore and metalcore and deathcore and emo and all the different cores were. And that when people said screamo, they usually had no idea what they were talking about. So what is screamo? Well, screamo originally referred to a subgenre of emo or emo core, which is short for emotive hardcore. Emo was an offshoot of hardcore punk. Hardcore punk started in the early 80s. It was characterized by aggressive, angry, fast sounds. Um, it often had very angry anti-establishment lyrics, and it was really more than just music. Uh, hardcore was also a, a way of living. It was very much a walk the walk, talk the talk kind of thing. A few bands that characterized hardcore punk were Black Flag, Minor Threat, Germs, Bad Brains, and many, many other great bands. So then, from Hardcore, we got Emo. Now, Emo, um, it was basically people that were already in the punk scene deciding to make songs that were uh, more melodic vocally and with guitar. Um, they were more diverse um, rhythmically. They often had, we'll say, deeper lyrics. There's some debate, but for the most part, people agree that Emo started in 1985 with the bands Rites of Spring and Embrace. So then, from Emo, we get, of course, Screamo. Now, Screamo was people in in the emo scene a lot of times, sometimes coming from the hardcore scene. They were making emo music, but they decided to bring back some more hardcore influence. So it was once again faster, it was more harsh, um, and specifically in the more harsh 
lyrics. Um, very, I mean, it's called Screamo, so they were very screamy lyrics. Very hard to understand at times, um, but very raw emotionally. Screamo, of course, is a mixture of the two words scream and emo. So then, of course, what is post-hardcore? And for post-hardcore, we're going to use blue because I like blue. So post-hardcore was people already in the hardcore punk scene, many of them already in hardcore punk bands, deciding to make music that didn't quite fit the constraints of hardcore. So they often had longer songs. Um, they had very complicated rhythms. Um, they covered more diverse lyrical topics. It was ultimately um, people in the hardcore scene just becoming better and more experimental musicians. Early post-hardcore was pioneered by bands like uh, Husker Du, Squirrel Bait, uh, Fugazi. A lot of people would say that they pretty well kind of just walk that line of hardcore and post-hardcore. Um, Fugazi is definitely looked at as the, the main pioneer of post-hardcore. Now, I have heard many people refer to post-hardcore bands as prog or progressive punk because of how experimental it is. And that just continued in the mid to late 90s with bands seeing how um, big, heavy music was getting and taking inspiration from that. So they were, uh, they were making a lot harsher, um, heavier music um, while utilizing that cleaner production that was now available to them. So you had bands like Refused and At The Drive-In really making music that shaped a lot of punk bands to come. <laughs> You know what I did there? <laughs> shape punk bands to come because Refused made the shape of punk to come <laughs> in 98. <laughs> I'll let myself out. After this, we get to the early 2000s, which is when Screamo and Post Hardcore as terms kind of got mixed and no one knew what the difference was anymore and that got us to where we are now. So let's compare some of the sounds that we've got so far. It's melodic, but this is musical, okay? This is complex, but this is complicated. Uh, this is deeper and this is more diverse. Well, that's pretty similar um and then we've got harsh and harsh and then we've got angry and heavy okay that's really those are that's really similar huh and see this is one of the more confusing parts of this these bands were from the same scenes they were around the same people so when you have two genres like post-hardcore and emo that are built on experimentation and growth, they're going to look for inspiration for different sounds. And when you look for inspiration, you find it in your surroundings. But let's think about that. These bands were from the same scenes. So where did the labels Screamo, post-hardcore, and even emo come from? Well, I did some research. Um, emo can be tracked down to two different sources. Um, some people say it's from a Thrasher magazine article in 1985, and other people say it's from some kid at an Embrace show. Now, for Screamo and Post Hardcore, I found nothing. So I went to their respective Reddits and asked there, and I did not get any answers on where it came from. Nothing. But here's the thing about all three of these labels. No one in any of these bands actually call themselves this. They definitely did not set out to make a post-hardcore album or a screamo album or an emo album. Not until probably the late 2000s or early 2010s did anyone say, I'm going to make an emo album. Heck, when I was a kid and 
But before that, in the 90s and late 80s, emo was a derogatory term. You didn't call yourself emo. So when emo started becoming a thing in the in the early 90s, in the late 80s, um, there, there were a lot of bands that got labeled that that were like, what? Bands like Rites of Spring that supposedly started emo. Um, their lead singer, Guy Picciotto, um, he said, well, first of all, I don't recognize that attribution. I've never recognized emo as a genre of music. I know there's this generic commonplace that every band that gets labeled with that term hates it. They feel scandalized by it, but honest, they feel scandalized by it. But honestly, I just thought that all the bands I played in were punk rock bands. The reason I think it's so stupid is that. What, like the bad brains weren't emotional? What, they were robots or something? It just doesn't make sense to me. It's the guy that started emo. But the other band, Embrace, um, <laughs> they were started by Ian Mackay, which uh, if you don't know who Ian Mackay is and you want to get into punk, he's a good guy to follow. He started Embrace, and he said this. Emo core must be the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, come on, man. But just in case you're wondering, I read in my Thrasher the other day that in fact, what my band, along with other bands in the city, was playing was emo core. Emotional hardcore. As if hardcore wasn't emotional to begin with. Uh, something also interesting about these two guys, Ian Mackay, Guy Picciotto. So, Guy Picciotto started Rites of Spring because he was inspired by Minor Threat. Minor Threat's lead singer was Ian Mackay. So, Rites of Spring starts. Ian Mackay became a fan of them and started Embrace. The two starting points of emo, supposedly. And then, after those two bands, Ian Mackay and Guy Picciotto got in a band together called Fugazi, which is supposedly the birthplace of post-hardcore, or at least the guys who mainstreamed post-hardcore. And neither of them know why anyone calls them that. They just make punk rock. That's got to tell you something. There's actually... Uh, more to this. Chris Taylor, the lead vocalist for Page 99, one of the most important, quote, screamo bands. Anytime you bring up real screamo, someone's going to be like, Page 99, which honestly, they're one of my favorites of the uh, the real screamo bands. They're really, really good. Very influential sound. He said, we never liked that whole screamo thing, even during our existence. We tried to venture away from the fashion and tell people, hey, this is punk. Again, just playing punk rock. Then Burt McCracken, lead singer of The Used. So here I am, it's in my head. He said, screamo is merely a term for record companies to sell records and for record stores to categorize them. So that's two. Very famous screamo bands, especially the U's. They were huge. Um, also, even further, for you people who are like, real emo was Fall Out Boy, My Chemical Romance, and Panic at the Disco. Pete Wentz said, no, nah, our band never was into being emo or being called emo. It was literally never our thing. We liked punk rock, metal, and hip hop. So there you have it. Um, and like, this is not an unknown thing. Everyone knows that bands labeled as emo, especially in the 90s, did not like being called emo. That, plus the fact that there's no real discerning difference between these two genres, shows how little it actually matters what you label music. Um, like, everyone in post-hardcore and screamo has different definitions of what bands are screamo and post-hardcore. If you go on Wikipedia, which I know Wikipedia, if you go on Wikipedia and look at post-hardcore, screamo, and emo, a lot of the same bands show up. And that's fine. Because bands make a variety of music. They make a variety of sounds that are going to fall under different genres. Because genre ultimately doesn't matter. The only thing that matters with genre is how you use it. 
it's however it makes it easier for you to categorize music and communicate what music sounds like with your friends and with people that are trying to talk to you about music. So it really makes no sense for people to fight over what real screamo is and what real post-hardcore is. It doesn't matter at all, I promise you. Don't worry about what bands are real whatever you think they are. Just listen to music. So I, w I don't want to make this video too long of me just ranting about genre. But I hope this shows that genre is just a way of categorizing music. It doesn't really mean all that much. The only thing that matters with music is listening to it, how you listen to it, who you listen to it with. That's, that's all that matters. Music was made to enjoy. All of the bands I talked about in this video I love. They're all really good bands, I promise you. Um, so go listen to some of them. I will, uh, I'll link a playlist, um, a playlist or two that has a few of them in the description. Just go listen to something new. Find something that you've never listened to before and make your own opinion about it. And just be adventurous in your music. 